I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Jay. Everyone say hi to Turn One Stoneforge Mystic. There should be a lot of comments in the comment section below. It's a it's a niche, a, a super incredibly niche market that I'm accommodating. Well, Merfolk, well, I guess that we we just start off with uh, I got into the game as a mono blue player. I was completely inspired by this card called the Thieving Magpie. Blue, blue, two generic, one, three flyer, and when it deals damage, you draw a card. And I just started the game with a mono blue permission deck, which is very interesting because you have to be... I, my win condition was pathetic. It was just four Thieving Magpie in the entire deck. Like, super po super pony deck. Um, and I have to control the game with, like, Navinral's disc and counter spells. But, uh, so that's how I got into the game. With an inferior win condition, I must say, because I don't know if you're familiar with the card Ophidian. It's basically Thieving Magpie for three mana. Well, it's a bit different. It doesn't fly. It doesn't fly. And it won't deal damage if you want to draw the card. So I, I went out of my way to play a worse card. Yeah, so I started I started Mono Blue, so I had I already had a love for, for Mono Blue. And then coming in out of Magic, there was a point where I started right before Theros came in, uh, was printed. I was playing standard, and I was playing the uh, uh, the reanimator deck. Uh, can't remember with Angel of Serenity. But anyway, I was I was playing standard for quite a bit of time, and I said, okay, when this standard is done and it rotates, I'm gonna go hardcore into modern. I'm gonna look back. Unfortunately for me, the very next standard uh, environment had mono blue devotion win first place at the Pro Tour with all blue cards. And some obscene card called the Master of Waves, which put some ridiculous amount of power on the board in all the uh, Pro Tour coverage. And I'm like, well, now I can't play Modern. I have to play Standard all over again, because this deck is perfect. It was everything I wanted to play. And the Master of Waves was insane, especially at the beginning, before the format could adjust. All the green decks couldn't do a damn thing about it. You play Master of Waves, you, ha you get like 20 tokens on the board. And your opponent just looks really sick in their seat. Like, I can't do anything about this. You know, why, why am I not playing that deck? And uh, I thought, well, I really like this Master of Waves card. And Merfolk apparently plays, or could play. I've seen versions with Master of Waves, but it was also a mono blue creature deck, just like the... Uh, the the standard deck that I was playing, so that's that's how I transitioned into it. And I and I had no intention actually to, with staying with this deck. I had no intention. My intention was to play Splinter Twin, but the uh, the deck was very expensive, and I wanted something much cheaper. And Merfolk was like hundred fifty dollars or something at the time. I wanted something very cheap to get into the format to learn the format. And I'm like, okay, so after I sort of learn the format, then I'll buy into the expensive deck. But the problem was that I wasn't losing. I was actually destroying everyone with this thing. My win rate was so high, I had I had no reason to move to Splinter. I was like, I'm, okay, I'm just going to stick with this thing. And and here I am today, still, still piloting Merfolk, and I still have no reason to move to another archetype. <laughs> it's possible, yeah, that's right. I haven't. I personally haven't played like any standard yet, uh, so I don't know what is uh, what what is even going on in standard. There was like a Grand Prix in Toronto that I I, I needed to attend. Uh, I will be playing uh, stand Merfolk in standard soon. I imagine there is some playability to it. I don't know if it's going to be tier one. I was hoping like some pro or something would would find a, a tier tier one deck, but. Uh, I guess nothing really has broken out. There was, however, just recently a 5-0 finish by one of our Merfolk community members, Fnatic, who, uh, he had a sort of an unusual deck. I think it had some pump spells in it, or some, like, auras. I can't remember. They, they, yeah, there were some auras and some pump spells. It was very unusual for what I would think of, like, an aggro Merfolk deck. But uh, he said he's been play trying a lot of things, and they weren't working, and this is the first thing that looked like it could work. And he said he got the list from somewhere else. So there is uh, there 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 is room for potential. I remember when I was playing Spirits, it took 
a lot of playtesting to get to where it was. And I, I did end up having a positive record online with it. I, I like two I, I went ten zero in two competitive leagues before I took it to a Grand Prix. I got wiped out in the Grand Prix though because the deck ended up being like really complicated on paper. It had like a million triggers. And on online they they did all the triggers for me and I realized when I started playing the first few rounds of the Grand Prix, oh my god, this deck is so hard to play. Rattle chains, all the, all these all these things have so many weird triggers. So, uh, but the point is that you know I I I put a lot of work into it, and uh, I where where all the other pros ignored this archetype completely. I found something there, and I, there's a lot of merfolk in standard, and I imagine that there is probably something there to be uh, rightfully competitive, um, a little bit more than just fringe. But I I, th I think it should be playable. I don't know if it should if it has what if it has enough stuff to be tier one, but it absolutely should be playable. They've got a lot of good playable cards and um, and a lot of different ways of making the deck, which maybe makes it a little bit complicated. But there's a lot to work with there, so I expect that there is something there for Merfolk and Standard. There's a lot of weird cards that have no place in Modern, but are completely busted in Standard. You know what? That only that experience applies more to the eternal formats than the standard formats. Because standard is just I can't you can't draw your lifetime experience and then put it into standard. You literally have to play standard and then adapt to whatever's happening there. You know, because there there's a very narrow, unique type of strategies and archetypes that are very specific and ever changing. So it's it's really a get in the trenches and play sort of format, which is one one reason why I don't play so much standard anymore. And I really I really like playing modern. I could literally not play modern for like three months and then come back, and more or less my knowledge and experience all still works and is the same for Murpho. Even if there are a bunch of new decks that show up, just to add on what you said about you know drawing my you know my experience with merfolk these merfolk are very unique like we have i think one lord and we have no land walk and we have but we have like different sort i guess we have different some sort of different enabled land walk uh like we can get unblockable if we have a bunch of plus one plus one counters on creatures so this this are the merfolk and standard might be similar to something else i don't know what it is but it's not the it's not the blue merfolk that I'm used to. It's the green merfolk. Some new breed of merfolk. I would try to build a deck that just has as many unblockable creatures as possible. We're talking like, uh, what's the one drop called right now in, in standard? There's a one drop unblockable creature. There's a reverse sneak. And then I would leverage the something of secret streams. I'm sorry, I don't know the names to these, these things. But it, 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 he says like all creatures with plus one plus one counters are unblockable. Although I don't know if it synergizes well with the creatures that are already unblockable. Maybe maybe that doesn't matter. But uh, I would try to make something as evasive as... I, I That would be my default plan. Make something as evasive as possible. You can't block me. I'm just going to attack it right into you. But uh, I... No, no idea if that strategy strategy can work. Because, you know, the, the thing is, Arena, at some point, is going to have a Frontier format. Like, it's, it's, it's inevitable. And I was, th I was thinking about that. Like, the greatest thing about um, them printing Silver Gill Adept, and what else did they reprint for Merfolk? Uh, but they, they, they reprinted Silver Gill Adept, and that will open the possibility of having a, another Eternal Merfolk archetype exist in what is going to be the 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 arena version of modern because eventually you know your your cards will rotate out of standard and then by default there they will create a uh, eternal format there that uh, you continuously play uh, you can you can play with your old cards uh, there I don't know if we really need the extra mana efficiency like you can play it but it it's just not mandatory that's all because like by itself it's just uh um it's good it's good it'll be good in the early game of course but it'll just be poor in, in all the late game matches
because you end up having just a 1-1 one, one creature. Not the greatest luck. That is, that is basically how Merfolk wins in Legacy. It's, it's sad reality. It's all, it's all about Chalice, and then if Chalice doesn't work, well, let's hope these creatures do it. No, I, I run four. I run four. Some people run three. Um, some people change their numbers, but I'm pretty hard on four, chal uh, four Chalice of the Void. At least on the 70... You, you could put three in the main board, one in the sideboard, but, uh, you know, just like how you said, you know, most of the games are won by Chalice, so... I want to maximize the chances that we uh, just completely screw over the uh, the the deck that we that the deck that's weak to Chalice. So if we're we're against a deck that's weak to Chalice, I want the maximum opportunity to, for drawing it. I think there's actually a ton of opportunity for splashing in Legacy Merfolk, and that's why I played with like Stoneforge Mystic in my latest like Legacy Merfolk deck. It was an absolute it was an absolute, yeah, that's yeah, the stone folk thing. It was an absolute failure, but um, well, that was my first try, so I I can still, yeah, you gotta just try a little bit harder, or I gotta try harder, <laughs> draw you at the appropriate moment. There is a lot of opportunity for splashing. It's just a, it's it's a, it's so expensive to splash, because you know you can. You could sleeve up and proxy anything against your friends, but you know at some point you got to play these play these decks against like real competitive players to know if they actually work. And at that point, you have to buy the cards, especially well, especially online. And it's not too expensive. Like brewing is, I don't know, it's relatively well, it's still expensive. You know, trading in and cards out out of the bots constantly, you're you're going to lose some value. Although it's better than at a local game store. So there's just no one, I don't think anyone's trying. And I think there could be opportunity for uh, blue-green merfolk, blue-white, blue-black, blue-red. But no one's ever tried it before. And uh, people are resistant to change, especially if they think they have something that already works. Well, here's, here's an interesting thing with Ranch Walker. You make Wasteland stronger in your deck because you can. It's a it's a more valid target to draw off of the Branch Walker. Not, I'm not to say that Wasteland is like a really good card in Merfolk in general, but you know it's fine, and it becomes it be, it gets stronger uh, with the more Branch Walkers that we play in the deck. All the utility lands get better when we play with Blan Branch Walker because they it turns into literal card draw. Like it's like a spell that we're drawing off the thing. But I believe with Force of Will, I don't remember what the number is, but you need like something like 20 spells in your deck that need to be blue to make Force of Will effective. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Frank Karst has a, a, an article for everything, thankfully. But yeah, that, the, the Force of Will thing was solved like a long time ago. It might even be lower than that, maybe like 17 or 18. I don't know, someone, someone watching this can correct me, but like it, you, you can get pretty low and still have a very functioning deck. So I think, uh, yeah, we... We could. We have a lot of room to splash things. Yeah, the reason it doesn't work is because the colorless part literally makes it a two-color deck, and you got to ask yourself. Let's say this was a two-color deck. Let's say this was I don't know any two-color deck. Do I have enough mana sources for the second color? And usually we don't. <laughs> is the is the problem? You know, the four mutavol isn't going to cut it. And then we're going to have to like a jam a lot more other colorless sources. I don't know, you have a Maya Coast, but we're going to take some damage from that land as well. I don't know how much, maybe not, maybe not that much, but it's, it's more than zero. Because I, I, did, I, played, I played quite a bit with Warping Whale in Legacy, and I ended up just not liking it because I felt like I just didn't have enough, even with Wasteland, I didn't have enough colorless sources to cast this thing reliably. And it, it, it was... It was, it was an okay it was a okay card it was fine uh, but yeah I, I just felt like it was turning the deck too much into a two color deck for this one card so I, I needed a much better reason to go all in on colorless than just warping will but I, for, I forgot about cavernous souls that that was yeah sorry yeah cavernous souls is a legitimate colorless source you know what I've been thinking a little about that uh, recently because spreading seas 
doesn't necessarily need to be played on turn two. It might actually... Well, if you want to mana screw your opponent, you play it on turn two. If you want, just want Island Walk, you just play, you play it on turn five or six. And by then, you probably would get your blue source, despite having so many colorless sources. So I don't know, like, maybe, like, you change how you play strategically, it, it, it could work. But, but if you do throw too many colorless sources in the deck, you do turn off your ability to play ca uh, Spreading Seas on turn two, because you will have too many Cavernous Souls and stuff like that, which is important for modern Merfolk, because Island Walk is incredibly important. Well, actually, I, I do intend on using Spreading Seas against them, because if they are going to be a three-color control deck, I plan on using Spreading Seas in combination with Tectonic Edge to take away all their colored sources and leave them completely blue. Yeah, and the, 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 the bouncing creature thing doesn't work so well against Murpho, because you can just vile in the, creature, the creatures back in. Muta Vault is difficult to deal with. Yeah, Jace, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Master of Waves is going to have something to say about that, but I don't, I don't see Jace winning games like the Master of Waves does. <laughs> yeah, I could do both. I mean, I, I could see Merfolk playing the full playset. It's possible. Like, a lot of people a lot of people may not like to hear that, because, you know, Jace is a very expensive card, but, you know, Jace would be an incredibly good card against other control decks. I mean, uh, if, if we exhaust each other of resources, and then I play a Jace on an empty board when they don't have much stuff in the hand, I win the game. Basically, a path to exile in your deck. Keep it. Land. Keep it. Keep all this garbage. And then, and then I win. You know, a Jace is playable against say Jund as well. You know, that will have a bit of a grind. I'll kill your Tarmogoyf with this member or relic, and then trade some creatures with all your other stuff. It can be really resource consuming. And then at some point you play like, and I could play it alongside Master of Waves too. I mean, it would be super clunky, but. It's it will be playable because the deck the the games play out really long and grindy anyway. So the point is it's it's playable. It's definitely playable. Will we need it? I don't, I don't know. Like it would require, I would say it would require a lot of control decks, like a lot of control decks, control decks where I'd really want it, especially like maybe blue white control. Jace would be really annoying to resolve. Like I can usually deal with a planeswalker resolving. This one might be a bit might be a bit too much. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'd take out one one Master of Waves, cut it down to three. I don't know. Maybe you could have two Jace, two Master of Waves, uh, and then put the other two Jace in the sideboard. I mean, it's it's. I I just say it's possible. It's possible. We don't need to play Jace the Mind Sculptor yet, but it's it's just a one man card combo. Everyone talks about, there's no synergy, there's no synergy. Who cares? It just wins the game by itself. Yeah, the whole entire synergy of lantern control and drawing cards and even bouncing creatures. You can, like, bounce your silver gill adept and, well, I don't know, that's weird because you can just play, play brainstorm. But, uh, the, uh, but like, it, it does everything by itself. Like, it, it draws, two, it basically says, I'm going to draw two cards a turn. I could win the game. Or I can, like, tempo you out by bouncing your creature and then attacking for the win. Well, against those decks, I never really needed a critical mass of lords because they're control decks. You ideally just need two creatures on the on the board, and you just attack into them over and over again. So that would be the plan. The only ugly thing is that uh, against Jeskai decks, they have access to Supreme Verdict, and that is just something I can't play around. Whereas with Grixis, I could, if I if I see I have enough counter spells in my hand for Anger of the Gods or Damnation, I could conceivably just empty my hand onto the board one at a time, and then put a lot of pressure on my opponent. It's hard to say what I'm going to have to need to do against these Jace decks, because right now they're just going to throw Jace into normal control decks, normal Jeskai, normal Blue-Eye control, normal Grixis, but we don't know what the best-looking Jace will be. Maybe it will be Miracles. Maybe it will be Miracles from Legacy, you know? I, I, I've heard, I've heard this list exists. I have no idea what they'll sacrifice, but I imagine they, they would sacrifice the Cryptic Commands. But I don't know. I, I'm I'm not I'm not a control I'm not a control player. I don't know I don't know uh, I don't see things that the way they do. But they will. I was just saying they they very likely are just going to replace whatever their win condition was with uh, four 
Jace the Mind Sculptor. I understand, yeah, that you, you're completely right, that they have to make some sacrifice at the four drop slot. I assume they do. I think for all I know, maybe they'll split it like Cryptic Commands, Supreme Verdict, and then depending on the matchup, they'll take out the Cryptic Commands or take out the Supreme Verdict and bring in four more or two more of the other card. It'll, it will uh, it'll make Merfolk stronger because Master Waves get stronger. Merfolk is at its strongest when Master Waves is strong. So if there's a lot of red removal, then Master Waves just becomes this um, ungodly win condition that like these decks just cannot deal with, and can easily and block it can block Bloodbraid Elf easily. It's a two powered creature. Bloodbraid Elf is a three two creature, two toughness. Most of these removal spells are going to be red. We're talking Lightning Bolt, Terminate, Dreadbore. I'm seeing Dreadbore. People are Dreadbore going up in value. Uh, Coligan's Command, so all those cards skyrocketed. It may not end up being like that. Uh, I've also seen Maelstrom Pulse. That might be an alternative to Dreadbore. And of course, we're still going to see Fatal Push. Fatal Push didn't go anywhere. But, however, like the Bloodbraid Elf needs to have, uh, what's it called? You need to have had Revolt before you like tap out with your Bloodbraid Elf for Fatal Push to kill the Master of Waves. Yeah, Master Waves is still going to... I, so I, I, I like that Master Waves will be really strong, and Spreading Seas will be very strong against that deck. Well, if there's a Rug deck, I, I think I'd be okay with that, because they've got Islands, so we'd probably get some number of free wins just by attacking and they can't even block me. Do you have any questions, Evangeline? Oh, why is it Nikachu? It was, it was a username that I made for myself like a really long time ago. It used to be a top-level po Pokemon trading card game player. Well, not, I, can't, I can't really say... How, how can I put it? I like ran almost undefeated at my local game store, and then it just turns out my I was like ranked 64th in the world out of 30,000 people. You know, back then, all it is are children. It was just children and parents of their children, and I was in like the sweet spot of like 13 years old that I I knew how to net deck and stuff like that. And and there's no variance in Pokemon whatsoever. It's like I don't know. Do you, do you play the game at all? Well, like there are cards in Pokemon where it's just Zero mana, discard your hand, draw seven. And there's tons of, like, discard, oh no, discard two cards, tutor for a card at zero mana. Uh, and also another card, like, discard two cards, uh, give a card from your graveyard flashback. And also there's, like, tons of wastelands. There's tons of wastelands in the format. Like, so... So you, so if you played anything that cost more than, like, two mana, you're a dummy. <laughs> And, and you have all these people trying to activate Charizard at, like, four energy. Anyway, it was, it was ridiculous. Uh, n that's what I mean by, like, n no variance. And also, in Pokemon, there was called the Super Energy Removal. It was like a double Wasteland. It's like one card, you lose, strip mine two cards. It was insane what they had in this game. But the point is, I, I, drew my own, I drew my own Pokemon card, and I named it Nikachu. And it was like, uh, I, I, I made, like, a lot of Pokemon cards. But uh, this particular one, the name, the name was great. And then when I had to find a username for online, uh, I, I opted to call myself this. It's sharp. It's got a good ring to it. No, I drew that, but I drew that like uh, a lot later. I drew that like within the last three or four years. Yeah, yeah, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon are very similar in their de degeneracy. Uh, shout out to the whole Merfolk community for making Merfolk what it is. I remember when I was getting into Merfolk, the subreddit on MTG Salvation was already the largest... Uh, sorry, not subreddit, like the, sub, the, the forum on MTG Salvation was the largest, like, uh, sub-forum... Uh, for for modern decks, I don't know if it was for the in the entire uh, MTJ Salvation. So there was already a very large portion of Merfolk players, hungry Merfolk players, uh, and and it's it, it's incredible like what 
what has come of it. Uh, we, we are now considered like the, the merfolk community and there is just an, a gross amount of support. So like there is, we still have MTG Salvation, which is a good place to, uh, uh, to, uh, to dis discuss merfolk. We've got the subreddit on Reddit. There is a Facebook group called uh, Merfolk Splash to Victory. There is, there is a, just recently a new podcast. Um, yeah, fishing. What else do we have now? We've got set. We have we have several YouTube channels, both of my own. We have Merfolk Joe. Uh, there's K Nub, I believe. I can't remember the the channel name, but I know the username K uh, K Nub on YouTube. Who also plays Pokemon, by the way. Shout out to this guy. He actually is an entertaining, like Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Red player. <laughs> No, no, he was just casually playing it alongside all these Merfolk videos. So in one Merfolk video, then he has like a, po he's playing Pokemon and then another Merfolk video. I was a blue player, by the way. Can't remember, it was because of Sand Shrew. I needed the Sand Shrew. I prefer the Sand Shrew over the other ones. I don't know, I'm hoping the Squirtle. Okay, I sort of wanted to say Venusaur because it seemed the closest to Infect because plants... Plant ha could, plants can poison. <laughs> so in your heart, you're always blue. Cute is a big deal. I didn't I didn't get magic for a very long time because it wasn't cute. My play my friends were playing this game for like over a, over a year. I'm like I'm not playing this thing. This is ugly as hell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play where there I can play with cards like Chansey and Pikachu and uh, Squirtle and all the all these other ones. So yeah, there, what, what, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, there's Tuxdev, T-U-X-D-E-V on Twitch, who plays a lot of Legacy Merfolk, uh, and he is really like pushing the charge uh, for Legacy Merfolk. There's, uh, and I'm definitely missing some some other ones, who are at least active right now. Corbin Hostler plays Merfolk as well. I don't think he has a dedicated channel, but he he. Uh, makes content for a TCG player. Uh, not yet, but maybe we're going to see start seeing some content out of him in the in the near future. Some th there's some, some stuff working with Andrew Day to Dryden. I'm not going to do them very often, but I do want to do them and uh, something that was asked of me for a very very long time. Nikachu, why don't you stream? Even though I've been called a streamer for like my entire life. I'm not an actual streamer. I barely, I, I, I stream as, I don't know, I've streamed like 0.0001%. <laughs> Thank you very much, Turn Wink Listener Elf. He has a lot of patience. Some things cannot be taught. I come in and out like uh, randomly, because like uh, every so often, I mean honestly, like every so often I want to like watch that Tom Ross reel that you have, you know, I probably, I probably, I mean, it's very short, but I probably watch it like 20 times or, you know, so every so often I have some need to like watch one of these montage videos. Like what I said is they're very good. They're very well made. Um, and like no one else, no one, almost no one, I don't think anyone else does anything close like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it there, it's very high quality content. So, so like in Melee, they have a bunch of montage like videos. Okay. I actually am, I'm surrounded by game stores. Uh, game stores are pretty healthy in my in my city. Well, for, well, it's 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 similar to me to be honest because well, it's 40 minutes by bus. So I mean I mean so like they're they're all around me, but I still have to like get on a bus and 30 minutes go downtown, get a get on an express bus to travel another 10 minutes to get to the local game store. So it's still time consuming, but I have a, I have a lot of options. Well, okay, so, so, to be honest, there is a local game store 10 minutes away from me. But I don't play there because the the players are not competitive enough. Oh yeah, it's super inviting. It's great, and I have no bit. I have no, I don't want to be there, and they don't want me to be there. It's 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 mutually beneficial. Yeah, yeah. If I went there, I just thrash them with my Merfolk deck, and like, well, I mean, it reminds me of another local game store. And there, were, like, some of my opponents were dressed up in like a squire outfit. It was it was that, it was that themed and inviting to these sorts of people. I just murdered these people with my deck, and I'm like, I have. I don't belong here, and I didn't want to spend four hours just, you know, obliterating people.
without any challenge for just some boosters. I'm definitely not rushing. I'm like 32 years old. I know. Oh yeah, and I, I've got the spirit of like the, of a 16 year old. But oh yeah, I'm I'm pretty old. I'm getting there. Uh, I'm a very I'm very clean. Sh I I'm very clean shaven. So it just uh, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. So that helps uh, keep my young figure. So I'm in I'm in university right now again, and. No one, no one can tell that I'm like way older than them. I, I blended perfectly with them all. Bye bye. Thank you very much.